is the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? Now, here's Rob Carson. Hello, welcome to episode number 78 of the Carson Show podcast. Hope you're having a glorious day. A lot of things to get to today. Some political, not so much as well. If you want to check out the Facebook page, it is uh, at Rob Carson Show. RobCarsonShow.com, of course, the website. And we are on iTunes at the Rob Carson Show. All right. See, that's that's about building a brand. That is about building a brand. want to welcome, once again, uh, listeners who are listening on uh, Red Maryland. Glad to have you guys joining us. We've got some very cool uh, Maryland-centric swag on our politically incorrect T-shirt line called Conservatees. Conservatees, you can see those at tpublic.com, T-E-E-public.com. Also want to welcome our uh, our sponsor of the radio program, which, of course, is Grass Monsters KC. Grass Monsters KC, they sell American-made mowers and other power equipment. Uh, they've got the Dixie Chopper, which is absolutely incredible. I've got a, a Silver Eagle in my garage, and I love it. This is more of a commercial model. They've got uh, residential models like the Z2. Absolutely amazing. And now they also have these terrific mowers that are made in Kansas called Hustlers. Called Hustlers. Get to uh, Grass Monsters KC. They are in uh, Raytown, Missouri on Raytown Road. If you don't live in Missouri, definitely check out the Dixie Chopper and Hustler line of mowers near you. Okay. Well, the big story of the day, obviously, is that Bill O'Reilly is out at Fox News. This is a huge Huge story because Bill O'Reilly has been the franchise for a very long time. And give the guy credit, he's had some uh, terrific success. He's made himself a very, very, very wealthy man. Not only because of what he does on the air, but also the uh, books that he's done, the the whole killing series, Killing Jesus, Killing Lincoln. I don't know who else did he kill. Did, did he kill Kennedy? I think he killed Kennedy. Uh, looks like his career may have been killed. I don't know. But anyway, I've never read one of his books. And like I said, I'm not a big fan. I think he's kind of an arrogant, uh, you know, Person. I just I'm not a, not a fan. Don't like his uh, approach to things. I feel like he's a professorial type talking to me. I don't need to be taught a word every day because I uh, I think I have a pretty decent vocabulary. I don't need you, prof- Professor Bill, to tell me that. That aside, it appears that Bill O'Reilly has been able to get away with a lot of things, and maybe he's a throwback to a distant broadcast culture that existed before I got into it. And I've seen this, by the way. I've seen this in radio. I worked in a very large city with a man who'd been on the radio for a very long time, and he was able to be a complete a-hole. He was able to get away with things like not doing public events, not doing appearances, uh, skipping out on major, uh, major events on the radio like radio telethons, things like that. And, and because of uh, the money-making aspects of Bill O'Reilly's show and the show that I'm talking to about, I should say, they are able to get away with a lot of crap. Bill O'Reilly, kind of a throwback to that. And I think TV is even more insufferable with regard to that. But local markets, the days of Ron Burgundy are gone. In local markets, those are gone. But in, in some cases, you can be a complete jerk at work. And it's kind of like the emperor's new clothes. You don't dare say anything. That's what it kind of sounds like with what happened with the Bill O'Reilly. He's out. Rupert Murdoch made the announcement. Apparently, uh, a letter signed by he and his sons. And uh, by the way, Fox has announced that Tucker Carlson will move to 8 o'clock. The 5 will move to 9. Sean Hannity will stay on at his 10 o'clock slot. This, of course, is Eastern Standard. O'Reilly was in Vatican City with his son and met with uh, Pope Francis. You know, you're a pretty big deal when you get to meet with the Pope, right? His contract worth about $20 million a year on Wednesday. Dana Perino hosted the show, which is now called The Factor, and announced that he would be no longer with the the, the network. And here's a a quote from it. As we mentioned earlier, Bill O'Reilly is leaving this chair and this network after more than 20 years. Bill has been the undisputed king of cable news, and for good reason. He's an incredibly talented broadcaster who raised the bar for interviewers everywhere. He has also held his staff to exacting standards and his guests. Uh, in his guest uh, quest, I should say, to put the best possible program on the air. And they are great. So uh, he left on top. His show was uh, the biggest thing on Fox News. Uh, Will Fox be able to continue? Sure. This is what happens in broadcasting. (laughs) You, 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 if you're lucky, you get a send-off. If you're lucky, you can say goodbye. 
Otherwise, you just uh, you just disappear. Now, Kirsten Powers, she used to be on Fox News. Kirsten Powers is one of the uh, a Democrat pundit that I actually uh, I like. Um, I think that she is uh, well. She can be relatively conservative, but she, I don't know, is is not a bat crap crazy out there leftist. Uh, she speaks reasonably. She had a few things to say with Anderson Cooper when asked about uh, Bill O'Reilly. She had an instance with him a few years ago, but she came back to the network. Here's the original instance that caused her problem with Bill O'Reilly and her falling out. Well, I mean, I think that it's it's stunning because Bill O'Reilly was Fox News. He had so much power there, and it was sort of unthinkable that he would ever leave there except on his own terms. And I did his show regularly um, for a long time, and, you know, I, I was thinking about an, an incident that had happened early on in my career there where I was on air actually with Margaret Hoover, who's at CNN now, at, on a regular segment. We were on every Monday, and he got Margaret's name wrong, and Margaret said, hey, get my name right. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, there's a lot of blondes in this operation. I can't keep you all straight. Megan Kelly's coming up, starts throwing all these blonde names. Um, and then at the end of the segment says, thank you for your blondness to both of us. Okay. That is uh, disparaging. That is uh, dismissive. I get it. Is it worth millions of dollars? No. Coming up, I'm going to share a piece from Daniel Flynn and Breitbart about uh, how not only Fox News, but cable news in general is populated by hot models. If you are frumpy, if you are older as a woman, don't apply. Back to Kirsten Powers. So I went to his executive producer and I said, um, he needs to apologize and he needs to never do that again um, or I'm not doing his show anymore. And I was told basically, well, you know, Bill, there's nothing we can do about it. He's a throwback. He's kind of an Archie Bunker. And I said, well, if you mean he's... See, some people evolve in their career. Some people evolve. Bill O'Reilly chose not to because he didn't have to. Neanderthal, then we're on the same page. He can never do that again. I'm a political analyst here. Went to Bill, came back, said, no, he's not going to apologize. So then I went to my... my, I was called into my boss's office. I was told, what can we do? It's Bill. There's nothing we can do. Um, You know, we're sorry this happened to you, but there's nothing we can do. I complained to Roger Ailes. I was told... The same exact thing. That That's not going to get you anywhere. Roger Rails isn't going to get you anywhere. <laughs> nothing we can do. It's Bill. He's a jerk. Nobody likes him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Roger said, you know, Bill, he likes to put up uh, p- dirty pictures and ask pretty girls to t- talk about them. And so the whole thing was sort of Bill. Oh, and then he said, you know, and, you know, what am I going to do? I don't like him, but he makes so much money. There's nothing I can do. And that's really the crux of it. And the reason why Bill O'Reilly was fired was not because... There were $13 million paid out to five women for uh, untoward action or, or words or whatever. Because that's a drop of the bucket. That isn't even his salary. <laughs> that isn't even his annual salary. Here's the problem. When Mercedes pulls out, when all of these sponsors pull out, when 50 sponsors pull out of the show, then you're done. Now, let's hear it for Kirsten Powers for not attempting to sue the network. Of course, she really can't because she actually came back to the network after this instance a few years later. So I did quit his show, and I didn't do it for two or three years. This was an election year. This is the biggest show at Fox. And um, and then about three years later, I went back, and I said, look, I'm willing to give this another try. And I, he said, sure, and I came on the show. And I never had another problem. We actually ended up having quite a good relationship. Um, but it just it just spoke volumes that I had to completely handle it on my own, that there was nobody that was willing to even say anything to him, just to basically say you can't treat one of our political analysts this way. So, so- yeah, you can't. You can't. And and most of us wouldn't. Um, see, when, when it comes to broadcasting, I've had it, I've had the snot kicked out of me by it. Okay, I've every, had every ounce of, uh, of attitude and, and ego that I could have ever had beaten out of me by the industry. Um, and, and I don't say things like this. I don't think this way. However, Fox News, if you, if you go to work for Fox News and you don't realize, as a woman, the, the biggest part of your resume is your, is your looks. That's it. Your age and your looks are numbers one and two with regard to Fox News and a lot of networks and a lot of and a lot of networks. If you're an older woman, forget about it. <clears throat> you're not going to get on. Now, they may have, uh, you know, KT McFarland on uh, as a contributor, but somebody KT's age would never be a primary anchor on on any network. <laughs> it just it just doesn't happen. This includes the big three. They are populated by white guys. All right. 
piece by uh, Daniel Flynn, and I told this, I, I told you this about, about Fox News. I'm not defending Bill O'Reilly. I, I don't think that you should um, uh, make sexual content, uh, comments toward women. But at the same time, there are women there who go there. And, and when you host a show that is called Outnumbered, and it is, uh, it is four supermodels and one dopey guy, and they call the guy in the middle one lucky guy. Why is he one lucky guy? Because he's stuck in the middle of four gorgeous women. I call the show Eight Legs and a Dude. It's eight legs and a dude. You, you look at the five on either. Uh, when when uh, when the five was, uh, is hosted, it's Kimberly Guilfoyle on the left in a reclining position, wearing a very short, tight skirt, form-fitting uh, outfit. She looks like, and I remember uh, Andrew Tantaros used to be on, um, on Outnumbered, and she would wear very, very provocative clothing. Now, does it deserve uh, a uh, comment by you? No, no. Uh, do, do you want to leer at that? No. But you're going to notice it, and she notices it too. And the women on Fox News celebrate to some degree their uh, sexuality uh, and the power that comes with it. It is a very powerful thing in the world of uh, in the world of uh, broadcasting. If you are hot, you have a much better chance of making it hot and young than old and not so hot. All right, this Tammy Lauren, who was fired from uh, from uh, the Blaze, apparently is a entitled little 24 year old biatch and uh you know it, she had an attitude she bragged about her forty thousand dollar clothing line normally you, you know you don't get that kind of an attitude unless you've been there for a while she's only 24 years old she's i guess uh, she she learned it in a big hurry and, and her looks and at her viewpoint as a hot young conservative apparently was worth well, it's kind of the, like the the female version of bill o'reilly she's the female version of bill o'reilly <clears throat> it's just the way it is you're hot and young, particularly when it comes to the uh, the uh, the conservative blogosphere. If you're hot and young and blonde, particularly, you're going to go far. <laughs> you're going to go far. If you can put together a cogent thought. But anyway, uh, Bill O'Reilly's accuser, Juliet Huddy, Andrea Tanteros, and I like Andrea Tanteros, by the way. And by the way, did you see Andrea, <sighs> Andrea Tanteros' book? I believe it was called like tied up. It was talking about uh, feminism and how it's tied up in knots um, uh, with regard to, I don't know what the hell. Anyway, it's got her on the cover. It's got her hands above her head. Her hands are tied together. All right. It is a very provocative book cover. It is a sexual book cover. Does this mean that Bill O'Reilly should be able to say, hey, I want, uh, want some of that? No, it doesn't. But at the same time, if you're not going to, sh- if you're going to not shy away from your sexuality as a persona, then don't bitch about it if, if occasionally somebody might uh, look at you. Okay? <laughs> Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to defend their actions, but at the same time, they're, they, they're very sexualized people on cable news, and they embrace it on air. But by God, if you look at them the wrong way, then, oh, how could you dare do that? Honestly. Back to this piece by Daniel Flynn. Those who share the chromosomes of the aggrieved parties, but not a, uh, a resume that includes girl next door looks or rock star boyfriend or Miss America, Gretchen Carlson, generally don't get hired in cable news. Sure, ugly people can get on Fox News Channel if they're guys. True. <laughs> you know? It really, really helps to appear really, really good looking if you want a spot on Fox News and you don't have a penis. The ladies never allowed within the sights of any Fox News channel camera suffered from the sexism of the TV news business far more than the on-air talent subjected to leers, propositions, and unwanted comments. Where's their multi-million dollar settlement? Sex sells, especially on cable news. Ugly women need not apply. Fat women need not apply. Old women need not apply. Hot women, you're hired. The main factor, uh, gaining a woman, uh, an audience on the O'Reilly factor, involved beauty more so than brains. Although there are some very smart, very attractive women on Fox News. What were Gretchen Carlson's co- uh, qualifications for the, sh- the Fox and Friends show and then her own show? She was Miss America, first and foremost. She was hired as a newscaster, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that she was Miss America, and then she moved up. Back to the piece. Cable news reliance on pretty women with short skirts and long legs does not go unnoticed when you where you expect it not to go unnoticed. Howard Stern, in homage to the NCAA basketball tournament, did a Sweet 16 bracket to determine the uh, the hottest Fox News anchor. Come on now. 
Bill O'Reilly possesses money and power. Men sometimes abuse the latter to manipulate women into sleeping with them. Women sometimes pursue the former by manipulating courts into believing that men use power to manipulate them into sleeping with them. Either scenario seems plausible. But hey, 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 as was the case with two other famous bills accused of far worse, Bill Clinton certainly, when the number of charges pile up, maintaining, quote, I did not have sex with that woman, becomes hard to pull off without an accompanying laugh track. If you use sex appeal to build your brand, the appeal of sex can undo your brand. So, you know, don't, uh, certainly you don't deserve to be uh, sexually harassed at work, but don't be surprised if somebody looks at you when you wear a shirt that's mid-thigh, or a skirt that's mid-thigh, and heels that are, you know, stiletto heels, and and you have implants. Don't don't be surprised when you when you when somebody might actually uh, c- consider you to be a sexual being. I'm not saying you, you're g- playing grab ass or you're or you're saying uh, you know if you don't sleep with me, you're not going to move up in the company. Those certainly are things that that uh, must not stand and cannot stand. However, don't shriek and go, "Oh my God, you looked at me as a sexual being. You you looked at my chest. Oh my God." even though my cleavage was was pushed up to, to where my chin was bumping it. And it's not just Fox News. If you, if you look at local newscasts across the country, local newscasts across the country, every night you see it. They are, they are populated with young women, very attractive women, very form-fitting outfits. Uh, you, you can't have a, a, a weather forecast anymore. Particularly in countries like Mexico, you can't have a, a weather forecast without a an ungodly hot woman standing in front of a green screen, wearing a short skirt. But every every night on the news, you'll see a hot young woman who is there. Is it because of her qualifications? Is it because she is absolutely the best thing on television? Sometimes, maybe. But there is one thing most assuredly true: they are very attractive. Meanwhile, Tubby, the old guy can be the sidekick on the side here he's fatherly and then there's a there's a formula to it there is a formula to it if you ask local news uh, people they'll say it's the they want the fatherly figure credibility and the hot young female co-host sidekick whatever you want to call it <laughs> that's that's just it it's a sad reality it is Music radio is, is the same way now it's become more of a, uh, a visual medium with uh, people needing to be on the air uh, they need to be on uh, the web and all that stuff. If you are young and hot, you don't have to be particularly talented. You don't have to possess any abilities other than being able to just talk about stuff, maybe talk about artists and maybe do some Hollywood dish. But you're on your way up. You're on your way up. If you're in your 20s, you can put together a thought in a sentence and you're hot. <laughs> That's what's happening. You know, a few years ago, I was told by one of the biggest people in broadcasting who was booted. Uh, as a company, and I've seen, listen, I've seen many CEOs come and go at broadcast companies. And I sat down and had lunch with this person, and he said, as far as this format, it was a musical format, thank God I'm not in it anymore. He said, your your ship has sailed. Your ship has sailed. I was in my mid-40s. Um, and I was I was flabbergasted because um, the, the, uh, the person who's doing the morning show there now is 64 years old. And, and that's just the way it is. So, you know, I, I bring to you me. This is me, my thoughts, how I look, whatever. I'm not happy with the way I look, but I, I present to you me. And for those of you who, who can deal with me, then I'm so glad to have you along. But let's just face it. Young and hot is the, is the way of the world, is the way of the world when it comes to media. Get used to it. So the antithesis of that, uh, Maxine Waters, who is uh, bat crap crazy and elderly, and becoming uh, very popular with the left. And in fact, she's kind of a, a millennial political rock star because, what did she say? Impeach 45. She's calling for the impeachment of Donald Trump. Even though the other day after saying it dozens of times, she told MSNBC's Craig Melvin, uh, I have not called for the impeachment. That's a lot of crap. She said it time and time and time again. That's the only reason she's in Congress right now. That's all she cares about. That's all she's talking about. Other than Bill O'Reilly. And here she is talking about uh, Bill O'Reilly. 
Bill O'Reilly is not going to be recorded favorably in history. Unfortunately, here was a man uh, who made tremendous sums of money, had a huge show, and really there's something wrong with him psychologically. He obviously could not sustain relationships. Now, this is a woman who, um, I'll just two words, Bill Clinton. Okay, you've heard it, Bill Clinton. And the stories about him talking to women on the telephone with this kind of sex talk, it is really just, you know. But he didn't invite them to hotel rooms, bite their lip, and then tell them to uh, put some ice on it. Unconscionable uh, that he would allow himself to end up like this. It's all his fault. Okay. It's any politician who is going to say this about Bill O'Reilly. Uh, you need to rethink who you're supporting. Uh, Washington, D.C. is a, and, and, and look, there are other uh, state houses around the country. Um, some of the most unsavory things happen with interns, <laughs> with coworkers. It's an incestuous, it's an incestuous. You think House of Cards is that far off? And not so much. <laughs> not so much. And, of course, on MSNBC, all they care about is that uh, that uh, Bill O'Reilly is replaced with a, a woman or a transgender or whatever. Katie Turr was asked about uh, who should replace Bill O'Reilly. They've got three white men, or they had three white men, Bill O'Reilly, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, and their uh, primetime lineup. Uh, Stephanie, do you think that, that Fox News has a responsibility to uh, vary it up now, bring another woman in, maybe somebody um, who is not a white man? Do they have a responsibility? Not necessarily. But you have to also think about Fox and the next generation of Fox. James and Lachlan Murdoch. These are guys who do embrace global citizenship, right? They have a massive partnership with National Geographic. Think of what it's like for James Murdoch, an outdoorsman partnered with Nat Geo at a time when we've got the government, when we've got the EPA getting stripped and more climate deniers than we, you know, ever. Okay, so now now we've just gone off the reservation. I don't know who that person on the phone was. But now the (laughs) Fox, I guess, should hire a a transsexual um, amputee. Uh, preferably uh, black or uh, Asian, maybe Hispanic. Uh, I don't know. I mean, just add who, who you want to. That's that's what it should be. And then, then you know, the Fox can talk about global warming. <laughs> Stephanie Rule, by the way, Stephanie Rule was the person on the phone. Katie Tour was on the uh, was hosting. Yeah, that's the most important thing, right? Diversity, right? Diversity. All right, let's uh, let's move on to something else here. Um, I I. I Right now, there is a great chilling on campuses across the country with regard to free speech. Uh, There were some opinions that are being allowed. There were some not being allowed. The hotbed of this has been Berkeley. We saw Milo Yiannopoulos uh, physically threatened. The building he was in attacked by people. His his speech canceled, basically run out of town on a rail. We've heard nothing of uh, him since then. There were other reasons for that. But uh, this is happening all over the country when it comes to uh, conservative speakers. Uh, Ann Coulter, the latest. Ann Coulter was supposed to speak at Berkeley next Thursday. Uh, The university canceled her speech. Here she is last night talking to Tucker Carlson about the accommodation she was willing to make, and ultimately it ended up being canceled anyway. For our students' right to bring speakers of their choosing to the university and our deep commitment, student of Orwellian language. So this jumped right out at me. This is a statement from Berkeley to students, and I'm quoting, we regret this outcome, the outcome being your speech being canceled, especially given our unqualified support for our students' right to bring speakers of their choosing to the university and our deep commitments to the values and principles embedded in the First Amendment. If they felt that way, they would not allow the things that have happened on Berkeley to happen. They would not allow students dressed in black, face covered, sticks, bricks, pepper spray. They would not allow it. They would crack some heads. They would arrest some people. And by God, they would let people speak on campus. This is no excuse. More from uh, Tucker and Ann Coulter. It's the opposite of that, actually, isn't it? (laughs) Well, yes, it is. And by the way, I am giving the speech. Um, I don't know. What are they going to do? Arrest me? Um, They can put me in the the Birmingham jail. Uh, But no, I'm definitely giving the speech. I was invited to give a speech. um, And they went through what what college um, 
students have have come to to recognize they kept piling on you know requirements ruses um you can't speak in the evening you have to speak speak in the daytime when yeah. kids are in classes we're not sure no, none of these other qualifications happen when it is a uh, left-leaning speaker that's just the way it is. Which room you're going to use, we won't tell you to the last minute. You have to exclude everyone um, except students. And although the groups kept, the intermediaries kept encouraging me to say, you know, this is unfair. They never do this to liberals. I kept saying, nope, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I agreed to all of their demands and then wake up this morning and they send out a letter saying how much they love the, the First Amendment and freedom of speech. And they're so committed to it. But we're just canceling her anyway. Okay. And they did. They canceled Ann Coulter's speech. She is going to go ahead and do it anyway, and I hope she does. And I hope that uh, pro Coulter supporters come, and I hope that they are prepared for uh, intellectual and physical contact. This cannot stand. This cannot stand on American campuses. This this sort of uh, mentality, this sort of uh, free speech zone that has been only allowed for those who are left-leaning cannot stand. We already know that America's universities are uh, indoctrination centers. That Berkeley allows this happen to happen is, is sickening, and I would take every damned bit of their federal funding away from them. And if I were an alum at Berkeley, I would say, screw you on your annual fundraiser. You cannot be run by a mob. Take those masks off. If you attempt to shut down free speech, if you if you break a window, if you hit someone, your ass is out of here. Your career as a student in this university is over. Goodbye. Um, I think it's the faculty and the administration. I mean, it was two student groups that invited me. One was the College Republicans. One was, as far as I know, a nonpartisan group that just invites speakers. I think they were right. embarrassed about what happened um, with Milo, and they wanted to show, oh, no, we can we can have another speaker. And I, I, I mean, I think you have kind of a pure case of it here. I, I love Milo, but I'm not Milo. I'm a 12 times New York Times best-selling author. I was yep. writing about, or I was planning, or I will be speaking on um, the topic of um, my second-to-last New York Times bestseller, registering at number two. If that's speech that the university, I mean, forget changing, saying that I have to speak in the middle of the day. I said okay. I, when they said so only on students. So what grounds did they? Okay, and that's it. Why are thoughts so threatening? Why are they so threatening? You don't want to go see the speaker? Don't see the speaker. How dare you say that no one should hear? <laughs> no one should hear this speech, even those who support Ann Coulter. It's sickening. When I first got into radio, I, I was um, a libertarian-leaning conservative. I, <clears throat> I had, uh, I mean, when I was in college, I didn't understand, um, you know, what it meant to be conservative or really liberal. I didn't pay attention. I remember I was pro-life, and that kind of made me a pariah in some classes, including my socialism, socialism class or what it, sociology. I don't know what the hell it was. Socialism. Yeah, it wasn't actually. But anyway, um, it made me kind of a pariah when I got out. Um, I, I remember hearing somebody told me, and this is in Columbia, Missouri, there's a little liberal arts college there. Uh, Stevens College is another uh, university in Missouri there as well. And somebody told me that liberal meant open-minded. Um, liberal means the absolute opposite of that. I've learned that over the years. Uh, I love my liberal friends, but I never discuss politics with them because I get ganged up on. I get ganged up on the point that I can't say a word. I can't, uh, I can't say a thought. Uh, even, and that includes on Facebook. <laughs> that includes on Facebook. Uh, I've had many friends, I'm sure, unfriend me because of my, my uh, you know, conservative or libertarian views. That's just the way it is. I, I, it's, it's shameful. I've never defriended someone because of their uh, ideology. Uh, I have defriended at least one person uh, when they attack me, when they attack me for a, uh, a podcast or, or a comment or a post, when they attack me vitriolically, then I'm done with you. We, we can have a discussion. We can have a discussion. I had a friend, um, I've got this new uh, T-shirt, this swag line, politically incorrect wear. One of them is, um, my, my kid is not a snowflake. That's what it says. It says, my kid is not, and then there's a snowflake, and that's it. 
And I had one of my liberal friends go off on me about it. And I said, you know, listen, I'm, I'm appealing to people who have these, uh, these conservative feelings. And if you can't handle it, then don't order a shirt. Don't order a, a you know, a, a phone cover. Don't order. <laughs> Just don't. Don't. It's ridiculous. Bruce Springsteen's got a new uh, <clears throat> protest song out. It's called Con Man. And uh, uh, this, well, actually, no, no, he calls Donald Trump a con man. Okay, that's no surprise there. He's a, he's a radical leftist. The, uh, the song is called That's What Makes Us Great. Now, realize, of course, that that's what makes us great. Exclude anyone who has a different uh, political view than you. Okay, Th- that's, that's the one thing that uh, Bruce Springsteen will not tolerate is an opposing uh, viewpoint other than his. But that aside. That's what makes us a great joint effort between the boss and frequent collaborator uh, Joe Grishecki and the House Rockers. Okay? And I'll just read the lyrics. I'm not going to play the song because I'm yeah, i not a big fan of Bruce Springsteen. Uh, they come from everywhere, a longing to be free. They come to join us here from sea to shining sea. Wow, that is holy crap. Did you see what they did there? They did a rhyme. That is genius. And they all have a dream and as people always will, to be safe from hot and warm in that shining city on the hill. I get, wow, they quoted Reagan. <laughs> That's pretty interesting, right? Uh, the chorus is, oh, no. Uh, someone has slammed the door instead of opening the gate. Aw, oh, let's turn this thing around before it gets too late. See what they, the gate and late. Oh, my, I, I could have sat for days and never found a word that rhymed with gate. This is, I mean, honestly, uh, wow. Uh, Mozart, <laughs> Oh, come on. The chorus, it's up to me and you. Love can conquer hate. I know this to be true. That's what makes us great. This is this is really, literally, this is the uh, poetry of a second grader. My, my daughter, my, my daughter is a fifth grader. She could she could kick these guys. You know, she's, my daughter's a sixth grader. What am I talking about? Anyway, um, well, I sound like Alex Jones. Alex Jones uh, couldn't remember his children's birthday the other day and what, uh, what uh, year in school they were. Uh, don't tell me a lie and all and sell it all as fact. I've been down that road before and I ain't going back. Wow, jeez. Fact and back. I mean, it's not exactly a rhyme, but yeah, it's close enough. That must have taken days. And don't you brag on to me that you never read a book. I never put my faith in a con man and his crooks. I won't follow down that path and tempt the hands of fate. Aw. Let's turn this thing around before it gets too late. There you go, fate and late. Earlier we heard gate and late. There's three words that end in ATE. This is like watching The Electric Company. It's up to you, uh, me and you. Love can conquer hate. I know that this is true. That's what makes us great. Hate, great. Hate, great. Fate, late. Gate, late. Hate, great. (laughs) In the quiet of the night, I lie here wide awake. And I ask myself, is there a difference I can make, awake and make? It's up to me and you. Love can conquer hate. It must be true. That's what makes us great. There you go. That's great. Today's word brought to you by the rhyme with eight. Eight. Oh, yeah, here's Bruce Springsteen talking about about his mission, I guess, as a magician. A magician. Musician. Musician. And our spirits are with all the millions of people that marched yesterday and... uh, the East Street Band, we are part of the... Which march? Was, was that the Women's March? Was that the Anti-Trump Inaugural March? Was that the Tax March? There have been a lot of marches. Just a whole bunch of marches. Later. New Resistance. I don't even know. Oh, he's part of the New Resistance. Okay. Our responsibility is always the same thing. It is to witness and to testify. <laughs> that is the basic job of the East Street Band. We observe and we report. We witness and we testify. Yeah, I know when he did uh, the cover of Santa Claus is Coming to Town, I was like, wow. I mean, that is witnessing and testifying. I was like, oh, my God. Wow, wow, wow. The new resistance. Okay. All right. One other story. I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, apropos of nothing, a British Olympian was uh, was on TV and uh, talking about uh, North Korea and Cuba. Apparently, he's running for parliament. And uh, he, he talked about how um, the only countries who have a, 
a real grasp of uh, uh, controlling obesity are North Korea and Cuba. Here's the exchange. The child obesity program that was um, uh, white paper was out and it changed massively from the white paper to what's been implemented. Um, but there are other pressures going on and the only way you can do it is either murder about it from the outside and, and not try and do anything or, or get about and do it from the inside. And it is... You know, no, if you think of the two countries in the world that have got a handle on obesity, what do you think they are? Which two countries? Uh, do you know what? I'm stumped there. I don't know. North Korea and Cuba. Right. See, they're quite controlling on behavioural yeah. change. So, you know, there is a, there is a place. It, it will have to be worked and you have to get people to buy into it. And, and the reality is that... Yeah, but need... people are starving in North Korea, aren't they? They're not, they're, you know, they're not obese because they haven't got any food. Well, they're obese because... Well, they're, no, exactly, but there were sanctions and everything else. But it's, well, um, the example is it's behavioural change. It was, it, was, uh, it was sanctions that did. By the way, Olympian James Cracknell is the gay of this... Uh, the, the gay, the guy. <laughs> Two-time Olympic medalist James Cracknell. Uh, wants to uh, run for parliament as a conservative. Normally, conservatives uh, don't say things this stupid. So, uh, yeah, he says that. And let's not forget. Also, I mean, don't don't just give it all to the to the uh, the communists. I mean, uh, there's countries like Nigeria, uh, Somalia, all of those that were supposed to be fed with uh, USA for Africa. All of that stuff. Don't forget them. <laughs> don't forget them. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. This is uh, number 78 of the Rob Carson Show podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to do uh, uh, 79, I think, also as well today. Today is the, uh, what, the, the 20th of April, 2017. If you'd like to, again, check out my Facebook page. It's at Rob Carson Show, robcarsonshow.com. And uh, if you go to tpublic, teepublic.com, look up conservatees. T-E-E-S, and you can see the uh, politically incorrect swag line, including some really cool stuff uh, from the state of Maryland. If you are a Marylander, as I was for about a decade, you know how difficult it can be to be a libertarian or conservative or somebody who doesn't think along the lines of Martin O'Malley and his ilk. This is a, a kind of a, a way to get your political view across with a wink and nod and humor. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there, by the way, uh, about the governor, Larry Hogan. Thanks again to Red Maryland for uh, for supporting me and uh, allowing my podcast on at redmaryland.com. Also, Grass Monsters KC. Grass Monsters KC for the power mower you need. Zero turning radius, American made. You will not get another mower. It's grassmonsterskc.com. God bless you. Have a great day. See you back here for number 79. Thanks for listening to The Rob Carson Show. Friend him on Facebook at Carson Show, on Twitter at Rob Carson, and on Instagram. Uh, I think Facebook and Twitter are enough for now. We'll see you soon.